Hey, good morning. This is uh, Dr. Tom Knotts. I want to thank you for joining me today for being a lover of the word. And we're going to continue um, with our next lecture. This one here is on the word congregation. Um, today you'll meet many different groups that call themselves churches, assemblies, congregations. And what is the difference? And, and where do they get the idea for it? So I want to define what congregation is and show you what the Bible teaches about congregation, whether it's biblical to call yourself a congregation today or scriptural. Because remember, we want to be obedient to the word of God. We want to let God's word, the Bible, tell us how we are to live and practice our life. We worship God the way he has designed it. We follow God through the Lord Jesus Christ and the leading of the Holy Spirit. So we'll begin with, first of all, church, our congregation is used 330 times in the Old Testament, one time in the New Testament, in the book of Acts. And it's, it's basically the word synagogue or synagogue. Um, it's pronounced in the, the Greek, synagogue, and it's speaking about the Jewish synagogue and individuals that were coming out and how as a result of the preaching of the word, many of the men and the proselytes of the synagogue came out and converted and followed Paul and became members of the church. So the word congregation is used 331 times completely in the scriptures, 330 in the Hebrew, one time in the Greek. In the Greek, it is synagogue, and it is identifying a synagogue of the Jews. And we find that those that left the synagogue heeded the call of the gospel, converted, followed Paul and Barnabas and Silas, and became members of the New Testament church. So let's look at the English word congregation and how it comes from the word Hebrew. Um, the English word congregation is the word eda. It's pronounced ade, um, but in the English it's E-D-A-H. But if you want to pronounce it properly, it's ade. And it comes from the feminine form of the word odd, which means a witness. Uh, the masculine terminology of ida, or are, in the plural, always means witness and testimony of the laws and a specific divine witness, specifically a divine witness. So the word congregation in the Hebrew would speak of both a group and an individual. It would be a group of individual members or individuals, each one being a witness of the divine, specifically of the laws, the commandments, and the directives. Okay? We get the idea of a bride, a feminine as a bride, who gives witness of what she has seen and experienced what she has learned, what she is being told to do, and surrendering herself to what she has been given. But here's what it is, is, is when these individuals come together, they come together, they congregate for the purpose of learning what the divine, so it's specifically a word that's used for those that come together to learn about God from God's word so that they can be a witness. And that means they can go out in the world and people will also see what they have learned through their lives. If you notice something, God has protected the Jewish nation. This is the congregation is God the fathers. And he has specifically chosen the Jewish people you know, the son of Shem, Abraham, as he comes out of the Shematic line, God chose Abraham and he said, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a seed from you that will be as numerous as the stars of heaven. I'm going to bring a lawgiver. Shiloh will come from you. There were many prophecies, 763 of Jesus Christ. Well, the congregation 
is literally the calling of God to separate a people unto himself. But they are not just a member of the congregation by the fact that they have a specific father or mother. It is a group of people made up of individuals that want to go and show themselves to God, surrendering themselves to God, and living their life to express and show God through their life. The congregation was made up of people that would have a life of separation. They were to be what they, the term today is, is kosher. Kosher means genuine or legitimate. It means that which is real. The life of a member of a congregation was to show the reality of God and that they not only believed in God, but they believed in God to the extent that every aspect of their life was a testimony and a witness of his divinity and that he alone was divine. If you went to the Jewish house, you would see on the gate, if they were true member of a congregation, on the gate, it would have the word of God written. On the posts of the fence of their property, their markers would be the word of God written. On the corners and posts that supported their home would be the word of God written. The husband would teach the wife and children the word of God. That would be what he taught them daily. Their lifestyle was to be a lifestyle that was a witness to the word of God. For instance, they would not work after dark. They would rest on the seventh day, which was Saturday. They would go to at least three times a year, but three times a year, every male had to go to the tabernacle. And then when the temple was built to the temple for one of the three feasts, they had to obey the feast. They practiced the Passover. A congregation was composed of a group of people whose very life was a witness of God's authority, his divine authority over all creation. They would not mix linen and wool. They separated everything because it was an exclamation, a loud exclamation point to anyone that saw them that they separated everything. They didn't chew meat. And cheese, I mean, they separated even the foods. They wouldn't put them in their mouth. They would rinse their mouth in between each one. It was that specific. So a congregation would be literally made up of individuals that were so serious about God that they had surrendered every aspect of their life and their being to him. And they would be a witness to everyone around them of God. When the stranger came, they were to feed the stranger. They were to bless the stranger. They were to leave the corners of their fields not cut so that the poor and strangers could eat from them. They wouldn't plow with an ox and a mule together. Why? Because whenever you saw them, they were doing something different. They were strangers to everyone around them. And it would be a perfect witness because it would stir the mind of those that saw them. And they would, you know, they would wonder, why do they do this? Why are they like this? And so a congregation is made up of individuals whose very lifestyle emanated and showed that there was a God and he separated things, the clean from the unclean that he cared about you having rest, that he provided for you. And they lived their lifestyle. They showed the feasts. They practiced, practiced them as a witness and a testimony. Everything that the congregation did and the congregationalist, which was the person in it, was to show forth the Messiah who would come and the mercies of God. You see, when Jesus came, he didn't say, I will build my congregation and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He says, I will build my church 
the emphasis wasn't on Peter. He literally, the emphasis, he pulled it back. He says, Peter, you're a small rock, but I am the rock. And upon myself, I will build the church. Jesus is the foundation cornerstone. Cornerstone was the first stone set. He was also the top. He would be the last stone. So he's the first and the last of the building of the church. The congregation are the people of God the Father. They were to prepare the world for the coming of the Messiah. So this is Dr. Tom. I, I hope it, I've made this clear. Um, there is a distinct difference between the church and the congregation. And the next lecture I will speak upon what an assembly is and what the assembly was for. All right, Lord bless you in your endeavors to know the Lord in Christ's love.